Hello, my wonderful AP Computer Science students. Welcome to Unit 8, where we are going to dive into two-dimensional arrays today and um, talk all about what they are and how we represent um, items using a two-dimensional array. So let's go ahead and get started just talking about what they are. Um, basically, a two-dimensional array, um, they're used to represent tables in our program, tables or uh, matrices. And the table contains rows and columns, or the 2D array is a table that contains rows and columns that are indexed at, uh, at zero, okay? So how we create 2D arrays is very similar to how we create um, one-dimensional arrays. So here is our example of creating 2D arrays with set values. So you can see here we have the two open closed brackets instead of just one open set of open closed brackets like a one-dimensional array. Now we're going to have two. Um, so this is for a 2D array with integer values. That's why we have the int there in front. Our reference is going to be values. And then with set values, with a one-dimensional array, remember I just would separate each item with a comma and they'd be enclosed in those curly brackets. Now with a two-dimensional array, we're going to have those curly brackets inside of curly brackets here. So you can see this curly bracket is going to be matched up with this one and those signal like the entire array and then what happens in here is you have smaller sets of curly brackets those are each separated with a comma okay and those represent your different rows okay so this is going to be um, a row this is a row and this is a row okay and they're rows because when two-dimensional arrays are created in Java, they're created in an order called row major order. So that just means the way that they are set up and defined is rows coming first. So those signal the, the rows. And then in each row, we have an element. So in this first row, we're going to have the elements 1, 2, and 3. In the second row, we're going to have the elements 4, 5, and 6, okay? so on and so forth. And then by adding those elements, we create our columns. Okay? So with set values, we have those curly brackets inside of curly brackets. If we don't have set values, if we just have default values, it looks, again, very similar to a one-dimensional array. It's just this time we have two sets of square brackets. So if I just wanted to make a 3x3 three three table, I would use the new operator, int, and then in the square brackets in the second half, I would make a 3x3 three three table. Okay? So this would create um, a 3x3 three three table and it would create it with those default values, which for an integer is zero, a double is zero, um, and so on and so forth, right? So your default values. This up here, we're, we're gonna draw it out here in a second, but this was also a, um, a three by three matrix or three by three table that we created with set values, okay? But I wanna draw that out separately on this next slide, okay? Because this idea that two-dimensional arrays are created in row major order comes from the fact that 2D arrays are stored as an array of arrays, okay? An array of arrays. So the way they are created in index looks very similar to one-dimensional arrays. Um, and when working with them, you'll end up picturing a table, okay? Like visually a table. And that's what I recommend doing when you are working through problems involved with two-dimensional arrays is picturing that table, okay? So again, here's our default values that we had at the start. Now, what does this look like? Here it is, okay? This is what I want you to picture um, as your two-dimensional array. All right, so we said this represented the first row. So one, two, and three go across that first row. 
and then four, five, and six go across the second row, and then seven, eight, and nine go across the third row. And with those rows, after we create those rows, you see we also have created columns. Okay. Now these are going to be indexed similar to a 1D array. So row, the first row is indexed at zero, the second row is indexed at one, and the third row is indexed at two. And then once you have your TD array, you also have your columns, and your columns start at index 0, index 1, index 2, and they go up from there. Okay, So that's what I want you to picture. Now what actually happens in memory is that a 2D array is an array of arrays. So what that means, kind of try to put a visual to it, although you you won't visualize this when you're working through problems, but just to put a visual to how it's stored in memory, um, it first creates an array. Okay, so right, so we would we would call that an array right now. Zero, one, two are the indices, um, and it creates that array first, and then it stores these little mini arrays in each of in in the array. Right, so this mini array, this one, two, three, this is an array inside of another array, okay. kind of like an inception scenario there. Okay, So that's our arrays of arrays. Okay. So just a quick little practice problem. If you want to pause the video and then play it when you're ready to see your answer, I want you to create um, the following 2D arrays just with this description. Okay. You're going to create a 2D array of booleans with five rows and three columns, and then a 2D array of strings with four columns and three rows. Okay, So be very careful the order that you put those numbers in when you create your two-dimensional array. It does matter. Okay, Rows go first and columns go second. Okay? So if I were to make this an array, a 2D array of booleans would be boolean, open closed brackets, I just named it example, new boolean, and then five rows and three columns. Okay. This number, first number, always represents the number of rows, and this number always represents the number of columns that you'll have. Okay, It's never switched. Again, it kind of flows from that row major order. Rows come first, and then columns are made second. So here, um, still be careful, four columns, three rows, okay? rows still have to come first. Okay? So you're going to have three rows and four columns right there. Okay? All right. And that's creating two-dimensional arrays. Now in this course, we will only be working with rectangular arrays. So when we create an array, um, like a three by four, Right? It's going to look like that. Three rows, four columns. Um, and it's, it's always going to be rectangular in, fact, in, in some fashion. Now, Java does have the option to make, um, to make basically irregular arrays, um, but those are not, um, not as common, and we will not run into those in this course. They are not tested at all. But you can technically have an irregular array where it's um it's almost uh, jagged in some sense, but we're not going to do those. We're just going to focus on the rectangular arrays, and those are going to be the ones that we're going to create. Okay, let's talk about accessing elements here. So to access elements, um, you use the same notation that you would use, like a one-dimensional array, except you have to reference both the row and the column of the element. Okay, So you're going to use the array name, so here I have ARR, and you're going to have the two sets of square brackets. The first one is going to have the row index, and the second one is going to have the column index. Okay, So for example, here's our new um, two-dimensional array. Okay. And if you see this on an exam, um, what I recommend doing is writing out the table and then labeling the indices, right? So I took 10, 4, 19, and I put that in the first row. 13, 6, 3, put it in the second row. And then 7, 9, and 2, put that in the third row. So I made my 3 by 3 
array. And then I also, in green there, I put the indexes of those um, rows and those columns. Just having that visual when you're trying to answer questions about two-dimensional arrays, it is very helpful and I highly recommend it. Um, some code might be, you can probably get it really quick without having to draw it, but a lot of the times it will be useful to have you draw that. So that's my recommendation here. Um, the six problems I have are just fill in the blanks with the correct values, just being able to access them. So first off, it says values 0, 1. Okay. What is that? Well, that's in row 0 and column 1. And I have it highlighted there what that element is. That's going to be element um, of 4. Okay. So TD arrays, they work just like the 1D array. You reference and access them using the indexes. You just need to have the row and the column, and the row always comes first. So here, this would be row two, index one. So row two, index one is gonna be a nine, and that's what you should put in the blank there. Okay. If you wanna try the other ones, feel free to pause at any time and then press play when you're ready to see the answers. But for this next one, where is element seven? Okay, element seven is right there in our 2D array and it's gonna have a row of two and a column of zero. So in the blank, it's gonna be a two. Element six is at row one, column one. So we're gonna put a one in that blank. Element 10 is at the first position, the upper left-hand corner, um, and that's gonna be row zero, column zero. And then the last one, three, it's gonna be in row one, column two. So that's how we access all of these different elements in a 2D array. Okay. Now, operations, you can perform operations on any of those array elements just by accessing those values like we did. So here I have another view of what you might see, um, whether it's on the AP exam or just coding in general. Remember that white space doesn't matter in Java programming. So sometimes what you'll see with two-dimensional arrays is they'll actually code it on a couple different lines to give it more of a visual look to the two-dimensional array. So here, I don't even have to make a three-by-three three table. It's already kind of set up. You can see in that table format, right? You don't have to draw this in, but I just to visualize it, it's already in that table format, right? What you can do and what is helpful is when it's already in this table format, go ahead and just do some quick little sketches of the indexes. So index 0, 1, and 2 for the rows and the columns to help you reference their values. Okay. So I have three problems here. Evaluate the following expressions, okay? As always, pause, try it, and then press play when you're ready to see the answer. But you can see here I'm adding two values together, 0, 1, and 2, 2. So 0, 1, that's going to be element 4, and 2, 2, that's going to be element 2 right here. Okay. So I take a 4 plus a 2, I add it together to get 6, and that's going to be the answer to that expression. The next expression is going to have two operations, the multiplication and division there. So values at 2, 1, 2, 1 is going to be a 9, and then 0, 0 is going to be a 10. So if you have sort of longer operations here, plug those values in and then perform the operation. So replace this with your 9, then you got times 2 divided by, and then replace that with your 10. Now, visually, it's a lot easier to do the operations. You take the 9 times 2, and then it's integer division. So 18 divided by 10 is going to be 1. And then your last one here um, is values 1, 0, plus 2, 0, mod 3. Okay? So 1, 0 is going to be 13, and then 2, 0 is going to be 7. Remember your order of operations. This is going to get evaluated first. 7 mod 3. 3 goes into 7 twice with the remainder of 1. And then 13 plus 1 is going to be 14. Okay. 
All right, and one of our final examples here is going to use the code to complete the table with the correct value. So there's a table off to the side here. It's a new four by four, okay, called ARR. It's a four by four, um, and we're gonna play around with some values in here. So you don't have to fill it all with zeros quite yet. Um, because we're gonna be changing some of these values. But that first line of code, when a two-dimensional array is created, it is set to the default type, right? Okay? So for integers, the default type is zero, okay? Right? So just remember, just remember those. So for reference, I'm gonna put the green indices um, and keep those up there on the screen just so you can kind of find your place easier. But two, three is gonna equal a five, right? So array at index two um, and index three, so this square right here, we're gonna assign that equal to five, okay? So five is gonna get that, become that value. So one, three, again, we're just kind of going through. You see how having the indexes makes it easier to locate where I'm at and then make those changes. Okay. If you wanna pause and figure out the rest of it, feel free. Let's go through the answers here. Um, here, we're actually taking the value at one, three, okay, which is going to be a three and multiplying it by two. Three times two is six. And six is gonna get stored in this value, index zero to index two. So six is gonna go right here, okay? Here, the value at zero two is gonna be a six. We just figured that out. So six mod four is going to be a two, and two gets stored in that zero zero position, okay? Here, two comma zero, I say comma, excuse me. I almost see them as ordered pairs sometimes, even though they're um, much, much different than ordered pairs. So I'm a, I apologize for saying comma, but it's two and zero, <laughs> two, zero. So right here is gonna get the value of 15. And then, sorry, this next line kind of goes on two lines because I made the font too big. You know, what you gonna do? So array at two, zero, we just figured out was 15 plus what's at zero, zero. So that's 15 plus two, which is gonna be 17 stored in index two, column two, okay? Here, one, three is a three. So 20 divided by three, again, it's integer division. That's gonna be a six, right? So six goes into 18 three times, or er, yeah. No, three goes into 20, <coughs> excuse me, in the form of 18, so six times. Um, which means at one, one, so right here, you're gonna get the value of six. The value at zero comma one is gonna be 12, so we'll change that. Again, this right here kind of goes on two lines but it says takes this value, zero, one is gonna be 12, and multiply it by this value here, at two comma three is gonna be five, okay? So 12 times five is 60. 60 is gonna be stored in three comma zero, which is right here. All right, and then the last one, two, zero, two is six. Six plus three is nine. Nine is gonna get stored in three, two. So we put the nine right on there, okay. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Not exactly an AP level question, but definitely something that will help you understand two-dimensional arrays um, a lot more. Okay. The last thing we're gonna talk about here is the length of a 2D array. So we know for the 1D array, when we use the name dot length, we get the number of elements in the one dimensional array, right? Um, for a 2D array, if we use the name of the array dot length, um, we get the number of rows, okay? The number of rows. Now, if we want to determine the number of columns, we would use the code ARR, and then 
we would put in brackets. Um, by default, we just kind of use a zero. You could technically use any index, any valid row index in the 2D array um, to determine the number of columns, but you'll see zero used most often. Um, dot length, that determines the number of columns. Okay. And why is that? Well, remember, it goes back to a two-dimensional array is an array of arrays, right? So when we did our three by three, if this was ARR, right? ARR dot length, okay? It has three rows, okay? Three rows, so that's gonna return a three. But when you do this, you're saying, okay, go to ARR, focus in on the first row, index zero, okay? Index zero here, and tell me how many elements are in that array. And that array, in this case, has three, which represents the number of columns in your two-dimensional array. Okay. So the difference between those is huge, and you absolutely must know it backwards and forwards for the AP exam. Okay. So here's a quick example using it. We'll use it a lot more in the next lesson, um, but here's a... Um, method that we need to write, again, it's a small method, called check square that accepts a two-dimensional array of doubles and returns true if it is a square table. So remember, a square table would be the same number of rows and columns, right? right anything else would be rectangular, but a square has the same number of rows and the same number of columns. So this is what it's going to look like when you're working with two-dimensional arrays as a parameter. Okay. Very much the same <laughs> as it is with uh, one-dimensional arrays. It's just now you signal it's a two-dimensional array by those two sets of um, square brackets. Okay. And you're going to return a Boolean true if it's square and false if it's not square. So how do we check it? We check if the number of rows is equal to the number of columns. Okay, so array dot length equal equal array zero dot length. So again, rows, if the number of rows equals the number of columns. Okay. If it does, we return true because then it's a square table if they're equal. Otherwise, we return false. Okay. So that's our little our little baby method. <laughs> and we're going to finish the lesson right now, but I want to end on a couple of reminders. Um, a two-dimensional array works a lot like a 1D array. Again, and this is because it's an array of arrays. Um, so a two-dimensional array is, um, is immutable once it's made. So you can't change the, uh, the number of rows or the number of columns once it's actually created. Um, you can't get rid of elements or get rid of any indices once you have that, um, that two-dimensional array. You can't mix data types. Okay? Just like a 1D array, you can't have mixed data types in a, um, a two-dimensional array. So all of those little things with a 1D array are also going to apply to a two-dimensional array. And that brings us to the end of today's lesson. Next lesson, we're going to talk about how to traverse two-dimensional arrays. And that's really where we're going to get into the good stuff. So thank you so much for watching um, the basics of lesson one, two-dimensional arrays. And I will see you next time.